My dear wonderful friends, tonight we will explore one of the most powerful yet misunderstood principles in the art of manifestation, the divine law of silence and selective association. Many of you have come to me asking, never, why do my manifestations sometimes fail? Or why do things seem to fall apart just when they're about to succeed? Tonight, I will share with you a profound truth that will transform your understanding of the law. Let me begin by telling you why silence is not merely the absence of speech, but the very foundation of your creative power. In scripture, we read, be still and know that I am God. This stillness, this divine silence is not a mere suggestion. It is the very secret of creation itself. Consider how God created the world. Did he announce his intentions to anyone? Did he seek validation or approval? No, my dear friends. In the depths of silence, in the quiet of his own being, he spoke the words, let there be, and it was done. This is your pattern. This is your blueprint. I remember who came, came to me in New York. She had been trying to manifest a specific position in her company, a position that seemed impossible to obtain given her current status. She had told everyone about her desire, seeking advice, validation, and support. For months, nothing happened. Then she heard this principle of silence and everything changed. She did something remarkable. She cut off all discussion of her desire. She stopped seeking opinions, stopped announcing her intentions, and most importantly, she went into what I call the sacred silence. Within three weeks, not only was she offered the position she desired, but she was offered an even better one she hadn't even imagined possible. You see, when you speak of your desires to others, you are diffusing your creative power. Every time you discuss your intentions, you are releasing the pressure of the creative force that should be building within you. It's like puncturing a balloon before it's fully inflated, the air escapes, and the balloon never reaches its intended form. Let me share with you what I call the law of sacred silence. This law states that every desire has its own gestation period, just as every seed has its own time of growth. When you plant a seed in the ground, do you dig it up every day to check its progress? Do you tell everyone about the seed you've planted and ask their opinion on whether it will grow? Of course not. You plant it in the silence of the earth and let it grow undisturbed. Your desires are spiritual seeds and your consciousness is the soil in which they grow. Every time you speak of your desires to others, you are essentially digging up your seed to show it to the world. How can it grow if you don't give it the silence it needs to take root? But tonight, I want to take you deeper than you've ever gone before into understanding why cutting all contacts is equally crucial to your manifestation. This is not about isolation, it's about insulation. You must insulate your consciousness from the doubts, fears, and limiting beliefs of others. Consider the story of Noah. Before the flood came, he was instructed to enter the ark and seal it. This is not a historical account, but a psychological drama playing out in consciousness. The ark represents your consciousness, and sealing it represents cutting off contact with all that would disturb your assumption of the wish fulfilled. Many of you maintain relationships and connections that constantly pull you back into old states of consciousness. You try to rise to a new level of being while staying connected to those who know you as you were, not as you desire to be. This is like trying to fly while keeping your feet chained to the ground. Let me tell you about a student of mine who understood this principle perfectly. He desired to move from poverty to wealth, but he realized that his daily associations were keeping him anchored in the consciousness of lack. His friends, though well-meaning, constantly spoke of limitations, of how difficult it was to make money, of how the economy was against them. He made a bold decision. He temporarily cut all contacts that reinforced the old state of poverty consciousness. He didn't do this unkindly or abruptly, but he quietly withdrew from circles that kept him tied to the old state. Instead of spending evenings discussing lack with his usual companions, he went into silence and lived in the assumption of his wish fulfilled. The results were extraordinary. Within six months, his entire financial reality transformed. But notice something crucial. He didn't announce his intentions to withdraw. He didn't make declarations about cutting contacts. He simply did it in silence with the same naturalness with which you would close a door to keep out the cold. Now let me share with you what I call 
the three chambers of silence. The first chamber is physical silence, the cessation of speaking about your desires. The second chamber is mental silence, the quieting of internal chatter and doubt. The third chamber and most profound is spiritual silence, the complete surrender to the feeling of your wish fulfilled. Many of you enter the first chamber easily enough. You can stop talking about your desires. Some of you even master the second chamber controlling your thoughts. But it's the third where the, where the real power lies and this chamber can only be entered when you cut the ties that bind you to your old state. Think of Lot's wife in scripture. She was told not to look back at the city she was leaving. This is not a story about physical geography. It's about consciousness. When you're moving into a new state of being, you cannot keep looking back at the old state or maintaining connections with those who are not old state. Let me tell you about the law of state resonance. Everything and everyone in your life is a reflection of the state you occupy. When you try to enter a new state while maintaining connections with those who resonate with your old state, you create a psychological conflict that prevents your complete transformation. I recall a gentleman in Los Angeles who desired to become a renowned author. He had talent, he had ideas, but he remained stuck in obscurity. Why? Because he kept himself surrounded by people who knew him as a struggling writer. Their very presence in his life kept him anchored to that state of struggle. One day, after hearing these principles, he did something that seemed drastic to others, but was perfectly natural to him. He cut all contacts with his writing group, stopped attending literary gatherings where people complained about how hard it was to get published, and went into complete silence about his work. Instead of discussing his book with others, he lived in the silence of his completed wish. He would walk into bookstores and quietly see his book on the shelves. He would silently feel the weight of his published work in his hands. He stopped seeking validation, stopped asking for opinions, and most importantly, stopped connecting with those who knew him as anything less than a successful author. Here's what you must understand about the power of cutting contacts. It's not about avoiding people. It's about avoiding states. Every person in your life represents a state of consciousness. When you maintain connections with those who know you in your old state, you're making it infinitely harder to fully occupy your new state. Consider the biblical instruction, come out from among them and be ye separate. This is not about physical separation, but about separating yourself from states that contradict your desire. When you truly understand this, you'll see why maintaining certain contacts keeps you bound to states you're trying to leave. Let me introduce you to what I call the principle of state solidarity. This principle states that your consciousness naturally seeks alignment with the predominant consciousness of those around you. This is why being around people who knew you in your old state makes it challenging to maintain your new assumption. Think of it like tuning a radio. You're trying to tune into the frequency of your desire, but the old contacts in your life keep pulling the dial back to the old frequency. The solution is not to fight against this pulling. The solution is to remove yourself from the range of the old frequency entirely. Now, some of you might be thinking, but Neville, isn't it selfish to cut contacts with people? Let me tell you something profound. You're not cutting contact with people. You're cutting contact with states. When you successfully establish yourself in your new state, you'll find that some of these people will either transform with you or naturally fall away. Let me share with you what I call the law of silent transformation. When a caterpillar enters its cocoon, it doesn't announce its transformation. It doesn't seek approval from other caterpillars. It doesn't maintain connections with its caterpillar life. In perfect silence, in complete isolation, it undergoes its magnificent transformation. This is your pattern. When you're transforming into a new state of consciousness, you must enter your own psychological cocoon. This is why silence and cutting contacts are not just helpful suggestions. They are spiritual imperatives. I remember a woman in my New York lectures who desired marriage. She had been dating for years, constantly discussing her relationships with friends always seeking advice, always maintaining connections with people who knew her as the single friend. She was constantly in what I call the state of seeking. After learning these principles, 
she did something revolutionary. She cut all contacts with her dating circles, stopped discussing relationships entirely, and withdrew from the constant social commentary about her love life. Instead, she went into complete silence and lived in the assumption of being happily married. Her friends thought she had become antisocial. Some even criticized her for withdrawing, but she understood something they didn't. She couldn't become the woman she desired to be while maintaining connections that kept her in the state of seeking. Here's what you must understand about the power of silence. It's not merely the absence of noise, it's the presence of power. When you go into silence about your desires, when you cut contacts with those who know you as you were, you are creating a vacuum in consciousness. And nature abhors a vacuum? Let me introduce you to the four stages of silent creation. The first stage is recognition, recognizing that your current contacts and conversations are keeping you bound to your old state. The second stage is withdrawal, quietly removing yourself from environments and relationships that reinforce the old state. The third stage is silence, maintaining complete silence about your transformation. The fourth stage is emergence, naturally revealing your new state once it's fully embodied. Most people fail because they try to skip stages. They recognize the need for change, but maintain all their old contacts. They try to withdraw, but keep announcing their withdrawal. They attempt silence, but keep checking if it's working. Remember, a seed doesn't grow faster because you keep checking on it. Consider Joseph in scripture. When he received his dream of greatness, did he maintain connections with those who knew him as a slave? No, he was separated from all his old contacts, placed in what appeared to be adverse circumstances. But these very circumstances were preparing him for his transformation. This brings us to what I call the principle of sacred separation. Just as a pregnant woman carries her unborn child in the silence and privacy of her psalm, you must carry your desire in the silence and privacy of your consciousness. Every time you discuss it, every time you maintain contact with those who doubt it, you're exposing your unborn desire to harmful elements. Let me tell you about a businessman who came to me in desperate circumstances. His company was failing, and he had been constantly discussing his problems with everyone who would listen. His entire network consisted of people who knew him as the owner of a struggling business. I shared with him these principles and he understood them at a deep level. He stopped attending business networking events where people discussed market difficulties. He cut contacts with his commiseration circle, those friends who gathered to share business troubles. He went into complete silence about his company status. Instead of seeking advice, he sought silence. Instead of maintaining connections that reinforced failure, he insulated his consciousness in the assumption of success. To the outside world, he seemed to have become a recluse. But in the silence of his consciousness, a transformation was taking place. What happened next illustrates perfectly what I call the law of silent attraction. Within three months, his business began attracting opportunities that had been there all along, but were invisible to him while he was in the state of struggle and constant discussion. You see, when you're constantly talking about your problems, constantly maintaining contacts with those who reinforce your limitations. You're blind to the opportunities surrounding you. Let me share with you the deeper metaphysical reason why silence and cutting contacts are so crucial. In scripture, we read, in returning and rest shall ye be saved. In quietness and in confidence shall be your strength. This is not merely poetic language, it's a precise description of the law of consciousness. When you maintain silence and cut contacts with the old state, you're doing something profound. You're creating what I call a consciousness vacuum. Nature must fill this vacuum, but it can only fill it with whatever corresponds to your assumed state. Consider this principle. Every person in your life is a mirror reflecting back to you your state of consciousness. When you maintain contacts with those who knew you in your old state, you're constantly being reminded of who you were, not who you desire to be. This is why cutting contacts is not an act of rejection, but an act of spiritual wisdom. I remember a teacher who came to me. She had been trying to manifest a position at a prestigious university, but she kept herself surrounded by colleagues who knew her as a struggling substitute teacher. Every conversation, every interaction, every relationship reinforced her current state. She understood these principles. 
and did something that seemed radical to others, she quietly withdrew from her regular social circles. She stopped attending teachers' gatherings where the conversation centered around limited opportunities. She cut contacts with those who consistently reminded her of her current circumstances. Instead, she went into what I call the silence of assumption. In this silence, free from the constant reinforcement of her old state, she lived completely in the assumption of being a distinguished professor. She didn't tell anyone about this inner transformation. She didn't seek validation. She simply lived in the silence of her fulfilled desire. Here's what you must understand about the power of sacred isolation. When you isolate yourself from influences that contradict your desired state, you're not being antisocial, you're being spiritually wise. Just as a scientist must create a controlled environment for certain experiments, you must create a controlled environment in consciousness for your transformation. Let me introduce you to what I call the seven seals of silence. The first seal is physical withdrawal, removing yourself from environments that reinforce the old state. The second seal is social disconnection, cutting contacts with those who know you only as you were. The third seal is conversational silence, refusing to discuss your transformation or desire. The fourth seal is mental quietude, silencing the internal dialogue about your past state. The fifth seal is emotional stillness, maintaining calm confidence in your assumption. The sixth seal is spiritual insulation, protecting your consciousness from doubt and disbelief. The seventh seal is complete absorption, living entirely in the feeling of your wish fulfilled. Each of these seals must be maintained if you wish to complete your transformation. Breaking even one seal can allow the old state to seep back into your consciousness. Consider the biblical story of the three wise men. After they saw the Christ child, they were warned in a dream not to return to Herod. This is a psychological truth once you've conceived your new state. Seeing the Christ child, you must not return to the old state, Herod. You must take another way home. Now, let me share with you what I call the ultimate law of silent achievement. When you understand this law, you'll never again question the power of silence and selective contact. Every great achievement in history, every significant transformation has followed this pattern of silence and sacred isolation. Think of Jesus going into the wilderness for 40 days. Think of Buddha leaving his palace and social circles. Think of every great inventor, artist, or visionary who withdrew from society to birth their creation. This is not coincidence, it's law. Let me tell you about my own experience with this principle. When I first discovered these truths, I didn't announce them to the world. I went into silence. I cut contacts with those who knew me as the old man. In that silence, in that sacred isolation, I experienced what I call the great knowing. Here's what you must do starting tonight. First, make a solemn covenant with yourself a covenant of silence. No more discussing your desires, your plans, your transformations with anyone. Second, begin what I call the great withdrawal, systematically cutting contacts with those who hold you in your old state. But remember, this is not about physical isolation, it's about state isolation. You're not rejecting people, you're rejecting states of consciousness that no longer serve your transformation. I'll share with you the five commands of silent power. Thou shalt not speak of thy desire to anyone. Thou shalt cut all contacts that anchor thee to the old state. Thou shalt live completely in the silence of thy wish fulfilled. Thou shalt not return to check on thy progress. Thou shalt maintain thy silence until thy manifestation is complete. These commands are not suggestions, they are spiritual laws that must be obeyed if you wish to transform your reality. Consider this final principle I call the law of silent emergence. Just as a butterfly emerges from its cocoon, only when its transformation is complete, you should only re-emerge into the world when your new state is fully embodied. Let me tell you about the three signs of complete transformation. First, when your new state feels more natural than your old state. Second, when maintaining silence requires no effort. Third, when your old contacts naturally fall away or transform to match your new state. Remember, my dear friends, that silence is not the absence of sound, it's the presence of power. Cutting contacts is not the absence of relationship. It's the presence of spiritual wisdom. As we conclude tonight's talk, 
I want to leave you with this final truth. Your world is your consciousness pushed up. Every person, every circumstance, every condition in your life is there because of the state you occupy. When you change your state in silence, when you cut contacts with the old state, you automatically change your world. Go forth now and doubt, not in fear, but in the absolute knowing that as you maintain your silence, as you cut contacts with the old state, your transformation must manifest its law. Remember these words from scripture. Be still and know that I am God. This stillness, this silence, this sacred isolation, this is your path to transformation. And now, my dear wonderful friends, as we close this evening, take with you this solemn truth, your silence is your power. Your withdrawal from the old state is your pathway to the new. Maintain this silence, maintain this sacred isolation, and watch as your world transforms to match your silent assumption. For in the end, it is not in the noise of the world, but in the silence of your consciousness that all things are created. It is not in maintaining old contacts, but in sacred isolation that transformation occurs. Go now in silence and confidence in the absolute knowing that what you desire is already yours. For in consciousness, all things are possible to him who believes and maintains the silence of that belief. Good night and God bless you all.